Hello and welcome to the latest installment of the ARIS Innovator Demo Series. We're going to talk this morning about component engineering with ARIS. A quick note about the demo series. It runs for 30 minutes and features all demo with no sales pitch. Twice a month, typically bi-weekly, we show you a different capability of the ARIS platform. Once the demo series is complete, you can always go to our website, aris.com slash demo series, to view the past demo as well as any upcoming demos. We have on the line today, Craig Curry, Product Manager. Craig, take it away. Thank you, Heather. Hello, everyone. My name is Craig Curry, as was mentioned, and I'm the Product Manager for Component Management Application. So what I want to do today is talk about a, a little background on what component engineering or management is all about, and then get into the demonstration. So there's a lot of information that an engineer has to look at when they're designing, right? They have to look at data sheets, technical information. They need to consider alternate components that they may need to use. They need to determine how long a component will be around, when it will be obsolete. End of life information is really critical in today's environment. Typically, to get that information, somebody needs to go to either the manufacturer or supplier and, and then update their information locally. They need to collect data for environmental compliance. There's a huge cost for companies if they build products that don't meet the various countries where they sell their products' environmental requirements. They also need inf information on conflict materials. Many companies need to track materials that they use all the way through the, the value chain back to the, or the manufacturing chain, all the way back to the mine in some cases. Typically, people will collect all this information and then they need to keep it up to date themselves. This gets to be a huge task, it's prone to errors and for them to uh, miss something. So let's talk about what some of today's typical processes are. So we typically have disconnected sets of information. So you have a PLM system, you have multiple manufacturer websites like, for example, DigiKey, Arrow, IHS, and people have to go and search on these and get that information and store it in their PLM system. So it's one source of information or multiple sources and then they're storing it in either a PLM system or multiple local tools. So this leads to manual integration. They have to keep this information up to date. They have to keep it synced between the different tools they're using. It's static. The information was likely accurate when they got it, but that could have been years ago. So now they have to keep all this information up to date. A lot of times there's no integration between procurement in manufacturing and design. So these other groups don't have access to the systems that contain the information that they might need. All of which is time consuming, prone to errors, and leads to, for example, duplicates. If a design engineer cannot find a component in the local systems, they may go ahead and specify a duplicate. So now you go out and buy a, an equivalent component when you already got one in house, leading to delays and cost overruns. One of the largest suppliers of information regarding component engineering is the IHS Market Parts Database. They are really the data set of authority for these components. They maintain up-to-date information on some 500 million different electronic components out there. So this is across some 5,000 manufacturers, 400 different categories, 400 plus, and they have a team of component engineers using ISO certified processes to keep this information up to date. So this re reduces the risk of obsolescence and parts, efficient compliance information management, allows you to make quick decision making. We've partnered with them, so we embed IHS information into our Innovator PLM platform. Why? So that en engineers can find this information, they can select it, and they use these components, and then that information is automatically and easily integrated into the PLM system so that everyone can have access to that. So what's unique about our approach? Well, typically, you know, components are sitting in a database somewhere in your company, maybe thousands, hundreds of thousands components that you already use. And then there are sources of information out there on the internet, DigiKey, Arrow, Silicon Expert, IHS, and so on. And then you've got manufacturer websites that you get information, all sorts of different sources of information out there. So an engineer wants to find a component to use in their product, they look in the database, they can't find it, so they go out to the internet, finding parts, and with ARIS PLM, we can create a combination of the parts that are out in the cloud and in the local database. 
That's what I'll be showing you in a few moments. So some of the key use cases that I'll talk about are being able to search and select components for a new design. You'll see that. We have internal part requests workflows, so not everyone is allowed to just go ahead and search on components and add them to their PLM system and use them. Typically there's a more rigid process. You may have sourcing people that need to actually go do that so that we provide a part request workflow so that people can do it that way. We support alternate components. You'll see how that we can get up-to-date component information. Also comprehensive compliance data, very important. You need to be able to specify whether something is row house reach compliant, conflict materials and so forth. And also we provide the ability to continuously update data so that when you subscribe to a component, meaning that you have searched, selected it and used it in your database, then you can get updated data for that when it changes. So with that, I'm going to get into the actual demonstration. A brief overview to Innovator. We have many other d demo series that go into more detail. I'm going to be focusing on the sourcing area here. This is the table of contents, right? This is where the different applications are that you would get to or the different areas of Innovator. I'm going to focus on a couple, a little bit in design and mostly on sourcing. Let's start out with design. Let's say I want to uh, search for a part that's out there. Uh, star 29, for example. So it finds the part for me. It's called an LCD backlight. And we can go ahead and open that just by double clicking on it. We can open up a separate tab. So this is the design part in Innovator. And this is a component that would be part of a bill of material. So I have full traceability up and down the bill of material structure. And this part is a backlight, a white backlight. It's uh, what type it is. So there's some basic information on this form here that we can see. And there's also various tabs down the bottom, right? We have the bomb structure, alternates. I'm going to focus for a moment on the, the AML tab. So the AML tab, these are the sourced components that can be used to fulfill that, this actual part in the uh, bill of material. So there may be one, there may be five different parts that could be sourced. You have alternates and so on. All right, so let's take a look at this for a moment. So I'll just view the manufacturer part. So this is the manufacturer part that's tied to the engineering part, right? So we have different tabs for this. Again, we have some, the part number, a description. We have the, who the manufacturer is. I can select on these and see information about them. And I'll be going through different areas of this as we move along. If I want the latest data sheet, for example, I could bring that up. Let's look at the bottom area down here. All right, so here's, I just clicked on the, the data set. So this information, this is the data sheet for that particular component. These particular data sheets are always kept on the IHS database. So anytime I need to see it, I click on it and it'll bring it up. And there may be, this is the latest one, but if I look at the uh, documents, I may find that, for example, there were more than one. In this case, it's not. This is a pretty old component. We can look at some of the information here. So the Part Details tab gives us information such as when it was last updated, the attribute name, and if it's got a value, what that is. So these are all the different characteristics that are valid for an LED. You can see that some of these aren't filled in, but we'll be looking at some that have a lot more as we go through this. So let's go back to the, the Part AML tab and see how do you actually add this on here. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and lock the component. And under the actions, we have an add cloud manufacturer parts. So what this is doing now is going out to the Aris cloud, the CE cloud. And in here, we have all the parts that are from the IHS database. And they're all organized according to part type and category. So I'll just spend a, a little time here. So we have various types of components, for example, logic ICs. Uh, next to these, you can see how many there are. There's 630,000, know, as I mentioned, there's, there's over 500 million total components. If I want to go down into one of these subcategories, I can do that and browse down. And again, I'll get a, a count of components in here, right? At this top level, I can search. I might be looking for something that's REACH or a row house compliant and so forth, whether I want local or remote parts. So let's go ahead and uh, add one in. So this happens to be under the category of optoelectronics. It's actually in other optoelectronics, of which there are 183,000. So if I just go ahead and run that, all right, let's say that I want to um, just run it. So once I get down past the first level, 
Here we have filters, much like you may be used to, you know, shopping on the web for various types of uh, other products. You can select the status. Of course, I might want to pick active ones, not ones that are end of life. These are all the characteristics that are appropriate to that particular part, type, and category. These are going to vary. If I pick, you know, an IC chip for a memory chip, it's going to have a whole different set of characteristics. So I can go through and select these, which I'll do, and I just want to explain first how this works. So if there's, if there's fewer than 10, we just show them all. If there's more than 10, then we'll collapse it, and then you can go in and your top hits are here. If not, then we can show them all. So now I can uh, scroll through, you know, again, there's, there's many different ones that I can pick through. So I can scroll through them, perhaps I'm interested in picking one that's commonly used, so I can sort by, you know, there's mostly red ones. Next is green, so I can sort either alphanumerically or by the number in each category. Or I happen to be looking for one that's near white, so I could start typing that in. And you can see that as I type that, it narrows down to what I want. So I can go ahead and select that. And then, that, then I can apply that as a filter. So when I get the results back for that, then we can go in and see, okay, well now we've only got 12 components that were listed. So I may want to evaluate a couple of these. So I could pick on, uh, I don't know, let's say three or four and perform a comparison on that. So I can go out and get a quick comparison, all the different parameters that are, that are appropriate for that LED. Okay, again, there's many different ones that you can uh, view. All right, so there's a couple of other options here. I can add this component. Um, let's say that I want to add this one. I've selected it. I can add this directly, or we'll talk about it a little bit later. I can add it via a workflow process, which is a uh, part request. So for now, let's go ahead and add it, and that adds it to my line. I can go ahead and save this component. And at this point, it's going out and it's taking all the information that's in our cloud database, as well as all the parameters that are in IHS, and storing them locally into the database. So that I could go in, and if I go in and you know pick the component that I just added, I can now see, for example, under part details, I have all the specific information. I could have looked at that I could have evaluated all this before I decided to add it. And typically, as I mentioned, there's a much more rigid process that someone has to follow to be able to add a new component to the database. It has to be from a, an approved supplier and so forth. And we'll see how you can get that kind of information. That's one way of adding information to the database. Let's just look, go back to the table of contents now. And under sourcing, there's quite a few entries in here for component engineering. There's update notices, which we'll talk about. This is the part search, internal part requests that are out there. So if I have many different part requests in the in workflow processes going through various stages, I can look at them all. Manufacturer alerts, for example, I can see any alerts that are out there. And these are alerts that come from the manufacturer. Again, I can select on any of these. I can search by their PCN number, by the actual manufacturer alert number, and so on. And I can look at it, get the document URL, and so forth. So we'll, again, go into more detail on that. Let's go back to uh, cloud manufacturer parts and just kind of show you a little bit more about searching. So let's pick a different category. Let's say consumer ICs and run that search. What I want to point out now is that uh, you see some color coding both for the part itself and for the manufacturer. So if I bring up the legend for that, you can see that we can assign different colors to different states. And these are all user defined. These aren't, you don't have to use these states. So this can let somebody know that, hey, this is either inactive or obsolete. Probably shouldn't pick that one because you can't buy it anymore, right? Preliminary, may, maybe it's going through some kind of a test stage, whatever it means to your company. And then the same thing for manufacturers, whether we're in preliminary, approved, up, inactive. Again, we can pick multiple categories or multiples here. Very quickly go in and do a comparison. And again, look at various component characteristics across the various ones that I've picked. Let's pick one and let's talk about the other way of, or one other way of adding something, which is through a internal pot request. This button here, which allows you to add one directly, would not even be showing if it were not available to a component engineer or to a uh, design engineer. They would have to go through the internal pot request method. So what I can do here is go ahead and save that. And of course I would, you know, in real life, fill out the other information. I could pick the part that I want associated to. So this is gonna be a manufacturer part. Typically it's going to be 
tied to a, an engineering bill of materials component that I would pick here, description that I could fill in and so forth. I'm not going to go through the entire process, but I just want to talk about it a little bit. So here's the, the part that I requested. I can look at that, All right? So that as this goes through its workflow, people can view this manufactured part request and see, okay, so this one, this person is requesting this component. Here's the various parameters for it. At this point, these are all cloud parameters. They don't have the other columns that show us that it's been stored locally. Why? Because we haven't stored it locally. This hasn't been approved yet. So if we go back here, I'll just show you the workflow related to that. So this is an out of the box workflow that we provide with the product. So here's where we are, this little yellow highlight. We're in the prepare request. Again, these are very customizable and easily configurable to what your business is. We provide one out of the box. It has this step. You can either submit it for a review or request. Yeah, that's all you can really do or cancel it. Once it's submitted, it goes to whoever reviews that. They can reject it or they can request more info and go through that loop or they can approve it. At the point where they approve it, then that component will actually be added to the database. We'll go out, get all the information from IHS and store it locally. Let's go back to the table of contents for a moment. Uh, we'll take a look at maybe one other area here, uh, manufacturers. This is a brand new database for me. By the way, today I'm using what we call release seven of CE, and that is the latest release that is due to be released in October. All right, so I only have a few components in, in this. I haven't built up uh, much data in here yet, but let's just take a look at one of them, Energizer. Okay, so this happens to be a battery manufacturer. Whatever information came from IHS that they have provided to IHS, I've got here. Things like cage codes, the website, and so on. And then I can go in and fill in other information if I want to. I can also see down the bottom under the Manufacturer Parts tab, you know, what these components are that this manufacturer supplies. So there's many different ways of getting to information. I can look at a component, see who the manufacturer is, manufacturer will see what components they supply, and so on. Lastly, I think let's talk about update notices. So I'm going to run a search for an update notice. So a big part of the, uh, the latest release that came out is the capability to perform or to create these update notices. So these update notices are also attached to a workflow. We have an out-of-the-box simple workflow. It just goes to the component engineers for review but it really contains some important information. So you have components that you've over years saved and stored inside of Innovator. What happens when IHS changes or the manufacturer says, oh, I made a mistake on one of the part details and then they update IHS and then that information needs to get back to you. Again, you know, this is the part that gets broken when you have this, this disparate systems. So here we provide these update notices and these can be configured to come in as often as you want. It's a uh, process that runs on the server and you can go out daily, which we recommend, or weekly or whatever you want. And anything from whatever the date is on, that you started and ended will be shown on this. All right, so this shows me that I have an alert that came in here uh, on this particular part. Again, I can click on it. I have traceability. I could go there, look at the, who the manufacturer is, look at the document. But some of the other things I want to show you is we have manufacturer part changes. So there's only one that came in on this. There might be 100. All right, and this shows me that this particular part had some changes to it. What changed? Well, it has one part detail change, one regulated substance, and one in the material declaration. So we can go in and take a quick look at that. And now we, if we look at the part detail, since this is stored locally, you can see that I have which generation is. Generation is in Innovator. It's telling it you know, which it's been versioned to another generation. So these are all first generation parameters. So I know I have a part detail that changed. You know, I, I mean, I could look through here and I could probably find it by looking for a different generation, but, but that gets pretty tough to do. So the other way, I, what we have is a uh, history toggle here. And what this will show me is either cloud changes or user changes. So that makes it a little bit easier. I can now see, oh, okay, I've got a cloud change that came in. This went from SC risk of nothing, and they added one called high. Uh, the other way to do it is very easily just go in and say, show me only those things that have changed. So now, instead of looking at that entire list, I've narrowed it down. Show me only those things that have changed. So this is the one that came in from the cloud. This is different color. This one I edited. I just put something in here to show you how that would work. 
All right, so it also said that we had some regulated substances changes, which again, I can go in and very quickly, what were they? I can narrow it down. Oh, this one. So I'm getting all this information. It's up to the user what they do with it. They, do they need to go back to the engineering or manufacturing and see if these are presenting an issue? I can bring up the latest data sheet. I think we also had a change on materials declaration again. Okay, so these parameters went from uh, 0.03 to 0.02, same thing for weight. This information will come back for every part that you have stored in your database. Anytime a change is made in IHS, that information will be synced up and pre presented to you with the frequency that, you're, that you want. We have about five minutes left and I'm gonna leave that open for questions. So there's a lot of other areas of component engineering that we could dive into, but this just kind of gives you a broad brush look at some of the capabilities that we provide. Really the key is that you have this information locally, you have it so that you can update it. If you want to write reports, you know, you can use our reporting tools that take this information. We have a very large user that's doing end of life reports. So it's very important to them that they don't have a component that goes into life, end of life. And this allows them to roll up reports for certain parameters all the way up to their top line bill of materials, top levels. Thank you, Craig. We do have a few submitted questions. First one, as these features are only available via subscription, is there a way for small companies to gain access? This is really available at two levels. It's a level that's provided basically our, our free product that you can download, what we call level one of component engineering. And with that, you can do the cloud searches, but you don't get all the compliance information. You don't get all the end of life information stored locally. So you get some basic parameters. It's intended to allow someone to see how the product works. If you are wanting to use what I've been showing you today, then yes, that is a required subscription. And we do that by number of components. We found that our customers were saying it's too expensive to um, do it by seat because not everybody uses this. So we have different levels of subscription based on the number of components that we're going to use. So it's not free. We need to pay uh, royalty to IHS for this, so we don't supply the entire product for as part of our free product. Can the tool allow for company-specific data to be added to a part and displayed when the part is looked up? Yes. I mean, Innovator is totally flexible in that respect. That's basic Innovator capability. You can add your own properties and display them, sure. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, that brings us to the end of the time we have allotted. Any other questions that were submitted will be followed up. Thank you for submitting them, and I apologize if we didn't get to all of them. I'm going to leave you with what is upcoming. On October 4th, we'll be going over technical documentation, and then on October 18th, we will be covering an exciting topic that will be on our website in the coming weeks. Again, you can register for upcoming webinars and view any past webinars at aris.com slash demo series. We would love for you to join the open Aris PLM community. We've got blogs, knowledge bases with a lot of good information, forums, community projects for you to access and contribute to when ready. Be sure to follow Aris on social. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, where we are looking to share with the community industry-related news and articles, latest information on Aris news, product assets, and more. With that, we thank you for joining us today and look forward to having you on next time. Thank you and have a good day.